Lawmakers from the House of Representatives Majority Bloc take out plunder from the list of crimes punishable by death under the controversial death penalty bill. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez says the lawmakers agreed not to touch the plunder law anymore because it already imposes capital punishment. Alvarez says the death penalty bill will give judges the option to punish perpetrators of heinous crimes with life imprisonment to death. Criminals sentenced to life imprisonment serve a 20 to 40 year jail term. They'll be eligible for parole after 30 years. The plunder law was amended to punish convicted public officers with reclusion perpetua to death in 1993. But the Philippines abolished death penalty in 2006 under the Arroyo administration. Arroyo, now a Pampanga representative, remains opposed to the death penalty. The National Democratic Front, or NDF, on Thursday rejects the government's improper cancellation of peace talks and lifting of immunity for prisoners turned consultants. The NDF insists there is no fair and just reason for the Duterte administration to scrap the talks on the heels of a successful third round of talks held in Rome. President Rodrigo Duterte scrapped the peace talks after the communist New People's Army terminated its five-month-old ceasefire. Duterte rejected the position of the communists that talks should continue even as fighting resumes on the ground. The government sent notice to cancel the Joint Agreement on Safety and Immunity Guarantees, or JASIG, which gives some rebels immunity from arrest. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre allowed the alleged middleman of Chinese gambling tycoon Jack Lam to leave the country despite being covered by an immigration lookout bulletin order that he issued. This is revealed during a Senate probe into the Bureau of Immigration Corruption Scandal Thursday, where retired police officer Wenceslao Wally Sombero is absent. Sombero is in Canada for medical purposes, although he supposedly sought permission to leave for Las Vegas in the United States. He left for Singapore on January 17, a week before the Senate began its investigation. Sombero's lawyer, Ted Contacto, says Sombero asked Aguirre permission to leave for Las Vegas on January 16, on the eve of Sombero's departure. He formally informed Justice Secretary Villariano Aguirre II about my intention to travel abroad to undergo medical intervention, as I had a series of heart attacks in recent years. Aguirre confirms this, but wasn't asked to explain why he allowed Sombero to travel. But he seems to be very courteous to you. He went to you to let him know that he was going to go to Las Vegas. Why do you uh, think he has to ask? Why do you think he had to ask permission from you? May I uh, request, uh, Your Honor, that the commissioner answer that because uh, they've conducted uh, an investigation on this matter. Sombero allegedly offered 50 million pesos to former Immigration Associate Commissioners Al Argosino and Michael Robles, fraternity brothers of Aguirre and President Rodrigo Duterte, in exchange for the release of some illegal Chinese workers in Lam's Casino in Pampanga. Aguirre issued an immigration lookout bulletin order against seven personalities, including Sombero, last December. Senator Laila de Lima, herself the subject of a lookout bulletin, says Sombero's departure is a big issue. I was a subject of the ILBO. I remain to be a subject of an ILBO. And I asked permission, formally, from the Secretary of Justice when I left last December for Washington, D.C. And when I arrived at the airport, several, uh, several immigration officers were waiting for me. Because precisely that's the purpose of ILBO. So they asked immediately for my travel authority. I showed it to him, to them, and I was allowed to leave. The Finance Department on Thursday expresses relief over the swift decision of Malacanang to give due process to mining companies facing closure after an Environment Department audit. Environment Secretary Gina Lopez earlier announced that 23 mining operations face closure after the DENR completed its mining audit. The DOF says President Rodrigo Duterte stepped in during a cabinet meeting on Tuesday after several cabinet officials expressed concern over the detrimental impact of Lopez's decision. The announcement of the mining closures triggered economic concerns from various quarters. About 1.3 million people's livelihoods stand to be affected by the closures. Lopez says the closures will only be final once Duterte decides on the appeals of the mining companies. She adds the companies can continue their mining operations as long as their appeals are pending. United States President Donald Trump sends a thank you letter to Chinese President Xi Jinping on the hills of his remarks about Taiwan that angered Beijing. 
Presidential spokesman Sean Spicer says Trump thanks Xi for his congratulatory letter about his inauguration. He adds Trump looks forward to working with President Xi to develop a constructive relationship that benefits both countries. Trump enraged China by accepting a congratulatory call from Taiwan's President Xi Ing-wen and suggesting U.S. policy toward Taiwan may change. The U.S. recognizes Beijing's one-China policy but keeps trade relations with Taiwan. Mm-hmm.